everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm finally bringing you how I style my new short hair. It is pouring and windy and crazy for California standards. <laughs> and so we just basically, we don't know what to do with ourselves when it's like been raining for three days straight. So what a better way than to spend it with you guys. I've now had about two weeks of styling it and playing around with the length. So I'm just bringing you kind of my sort of every day. I am gonna be showing you two different styles. If you can see, this is a little bit more of like a bend in the hair and this one's a little bit more of a wave. I'm gonna be showing you products that I use, different tools that are, I guess, more helpful with shorter length hair. All right, let's get into the tutorial. So first I like to do a rough dry. That just means blowing my hair out without a brush, just simply to get the hair dry. Once I've done that, I separate the crown section and basically just blow dry that lower area, smooth and straight. With my current length, the hair in the back is actually quite short, so there's really no point in kind of trying to volumize this area or anything like that. I personally have a wave to my hair, so this area in the back is where my hair curls up the most. So I just like to make sure that that area is nice and smooth. Some days I go over it with a flat iron to get that extra like smooth, you know, straight kind of a look underneath. I don't do this every time. Now, once I'm done with that, I bring the top section down. And in this area, I just simply go over with a round brush and basically just add some volume and kind of smooth out my hair the way I basically have always done. And so now once my hair looks like this, obviously I could just wear it straight like this. Or if I do want to add a little bit of a bend or a little bit of a slight wave. With this length, I personally don't like a very wavy look. It ends up looking a little contrived to me. And I think even a longer hair, you can kind of get away with that look. I just feel like with shorter hair, it should have like some ease to it. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you basically two different ways that I go about this style with two different tools, one being my Dyson Corral straightener and the other one being a one inch curling iron. Basically, I wouldn't necessarily use both of these tools. I would blow dry my hair and then finish with either the straightener or the curling iron. So on one side, I'm going to show you how I get that S wave pattern with the curl straightener. So I like to kind of get that top section out of the way and add a little bit of waves in this essentially mid section. So if we were to separate the back of my head into three horizontal sections, the first one doesn't even get waved or curled. There's just no point, it's too short. Any wave that I added to that would just either make the ends kind of pop out or kind of just give me these weird wispy ends that I don't need. <laughs> so in this mid section here, that's where I go in with a little bit more of an aggressive wave. And that's because that's where I'll get kind of my texture. Once I bring this down, I'm going to be a lot more subtle with the wave pattern here. And I'm going to start wrapping, just coming down about an inch from the root and wrapping around twice. And with longer hair, I would just open and release the barrel with this one, I kind of like to slide it down and kind of just let go. Now with the next section, I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. I'm closer to the face. I really only want a slight bend, so I can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to grab that top section and I'm just going to go in with my flat iron now and add that S wave pattern. So starting at the top, I'm going to aim downwards and then kind of come back up and indent in the hair and then let go. Does that look crazy? I literally can't see what I'm doing. And then basically I'm going to grab a wide section and same thing, bringing it down create an indent and then always come a slightly back up from where you left off and then do the next section. And then kind of to break that up, I like to grab a smaller section of hair and then going in with the curling iron to just to break up that wave and just give it a little bit of a 
different texture. And then this end here is looking way too wavy for me. And that's kind of it. I don't like to over fuss it. Sometimes I'll like look at a section and be like, that's too straight. And basically I'm just trying to add less heat to my hair. And all I want is like a slight wave or bend to it. If I'm really pressed for time, I'll ignore the blowout. I'll let my hair air dry and then come in and do this S wave pattern with my straightener. And on this side, I'm going to show you just simply with the curling iron. And I don't know why, but on this side, I always start in the front. And then on this side, I always start in the back. I don't know why. It would feel so weird to start in the back on this side. <laughs> And with my longer hair, I would just kind of bring everything forward because this section in the back is quite a bit shorter. It's kind of nice to grab it from the back and actually curl it back there as opposed to trying to bring it forward. There's probably some sections that I've left and haven't waved, but I personally prefer that kind of more undone look. Again, grabbing the next section. Also alternating how thick each section you're grabbing is I think ideal to kind of getting that undone look. Now next I'm gonna grab this face framing section. And same thing. And then grabbing a tinier section just next to that. Slightly different on that side. I feel like I definitely get more of that oof, like outer swoop, which sometimes I'm into. And then if I feel like it's a little too wild at the ends, I'll just get the straighter and just kind of fix, especially like the face framing pieces, pieces back here. I feel like can be a little bit more wild and it looks fine. So I feel like this one is definitely a little bit more done. I feel like this is kind of how salons typically finish the hair, especially in this length. I feel like for every day, I definitely prefer this one. But if I'm being honest, tomorrow morning, I feel like when I wake up, this side will be my favorite and this one will be a little bit more straight or like I've not done anything to it. And then I'm just gonna finish with a few drops of that oil to give my hair some shine. Always rub oil into your hands and then kind of play around with it in, into your hair. I think when people are like afraid of an oil being too heavy, it's typically because they'll like do a pump and like straight onto the hair. You basically want to hydrate your hands and then kind of work it through the hair. And that way you can get it underneath, kind of in between each strand without weighing down the hair. But yeah, this is how I style my hair. So let's talk a little bit about tools and essentially the only thing that's kind of like changed with my new length is that I've kind of switched to smaller barreled brushes and hot tools. Now, of course, for my blow dryer, my straightener, everything stay the same. And no, you don't have to go switch everything out. I just would use these really, really large barreled round brushes larger than this one and they just weren't really helping with the back of my hair so slightly smaller brush ideally I think everyone should have three size brushes but I know that that's probably the hairdresser and me talking and the average person does not need three different sizes but a large a medium and a small now people think that the barrel size is the wave pattern. And these round brushes are not meant to curl your hair, but always think of your round brush as a never ending flat paddle brush. So you're always just keeping it straight on the hair. You're not wrapping it into the hair. You're just gonna tangle your hair and it'd be a big mess. So always think of it as 
the reason why it's round is that when I get to the bottom, instead of like just having to pull it off my hair, I can continue to wrap and it's as if like the brush is still gliding on the hair and it just, it never ends. So think about it that way. And then for products, I like to prep the hair. So always start with hair care. Products that are supporting your hair or supporting your scalp for the better hair health and longevity of your hair is absolutely key. And those are the products we should never skip on. When it comes to styling products, those I feel like should be used a lot more sparingly. So only as needed. But of course I have my favorites and I am gonna share them. You'll probably notice that I don't share a lot of styling products on my channel and that's because they're just, they're not good for your hair. They're not, that's not what they're meant to do. They're meant to give you a look, a result. The result being the style. Anytime you see a styling product that is kind of disguised as hair care, it really bothers me because if you think of hairspray, texturizing spray, they have to contain alcohols in order to freeze the hair into that shape. And those are just not good for the hair. Now, I will say I've made videos in the past talking about alcohols being bad in hair products. There are different types of alcohols in hair products. They're called like fatty alcohols and those actually can be hydrating to the hair and they support the product in making it last longer. Whereas there's really bad cheap alcohols that basically style the hair, but awful, awful on the hair. Okay, there could be a whole separate video on that. But in terms of styling, like I said, I don't use it a ton. If you do like a little extra texture to your hair, or based texture spray is amazing. Let's just be honest, the main reason why I love it so much is the smell, of course. And I think the reason why most people use Herbe. And I feel like their styling products are great because they really do deliver that result. Their hair care line, their shampoos filled with silicones, not so much. But we're talking about styling. If you're looking for a very flexible, um, nice smelling texture spray, the Herbe is great. I also love the Kevin Murphy Bedroom Flexible Hairspray. So essentially all texture sprays are very flexible hairsprays. It's just, I feel like the word hairspray is very like 80s and 90s and texture spray is like the 2000s version. And I think it literally came about because we know how bad hairsprays are for the hair. Texture sprays are the exact same thing. Just leave the hair a little bit more manageable and flexible. The other thing I wanted to talk about is volumizers. I think if there's a category in hair where in this day and age is like thriving and we have products in a category that actually really works, it's the volumizing section. I personally have a lot of natural volume on my hair and that can be a blessing and a curse. Either way, I don't necessarily use a ton of volumizing products, but now that my hair is shorter, I definitely do crave a little bit more volume on top, as opposed to when I had the long hair, I felt like if I had a ton of volume on top and this big hair just felt like pageanty almost. L'Oreal Professional makes an incredible, incredible volume spray that does not leave the hair sticky. That was the other thing I think Years ago, there was a lot of products geared towards giving you volume, but they were very sticky and unmanageable. It kind of defeats the purpose because we can just hairspray our roots and have, you know, big quaffed look, but that's, that's not the look we're going for. I will link below volumizing products that I absolutely love. And if you have a finer hair and that's something you always kind of lack in your hair, instead of relying on hot tools to always give you that volume, it is really, really nice to try a good volumizing product. But anyway, I will leave all the products that I mentioned linked down below. But yeah, I'm about to head out and am I going to adjust my hair so that both sides match? Probably not. <laughs> who has been here since that video where I showed you how to darken your eyebrows or lighten them. And I did it, you know, both results on my face. And I went for a week with those mismatched eyebrows. <laughs> so, all right, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.